Look, the issue here is we have anemic growth in this country, and we need to fix that. We need to get growth going. We've got the lowest growth projected in the G7. If we put up taxes, which is what Rishi is proposing, corporation tax, that will mean companies are less likely to invest in the United Kingdom, and we're more likely to be heading to a recession. And we know what a recession means. I grew up in Paisley and Leeds in the 1980s and 1990s. I know what it looks like when economic times are hard. It looks like people losing their jobs, not having enough money to support their families, and we end up paying more. We end up with our benefits bill going up. We end up with the cost of public services going up. Well, let's so talk it's about a public service because it that's is a the first false, topic I'd like to talk it, about. It's tonight. a false economy to say that somehow by raising taxes we're going to bring more money well, in. Well, let's let's no, hear from our first son reader. Let's hear working. from John. Why is the NHS broken? And that's a question to Mr. Sunak and Mrs. Truss. Which you Sunak? To you first. I grew up in an NHS family. My mum was a local chemist, my dad was a GP, so I know firsthand what an enormous difference healthcare makes. And the reason the NHS is under strain at the moment is it's because it's recovering from COVID. And we all know that. And we saw what happened during coronavirus with the NHS. We saw the pressure it was put under. And we also saw what was happening in social care. And there are many people like you who are waiting to get the treatment that they need and deserve, particularly with regard to cancer. And that's why I did something really difficult that I'm actually getting a lot of flack for at the moment. And I'm sure we'll talk about it tonight. And I made sure that we got the NHS the funding that it needed to help work through the backlogs, get everyone the care that they needed, and do that as quickly as possible. Now, it wasn't an easy thing for me to do, and as I said, I've got a lot of criticism for it. But I believe it was the right thing to do, because I don't think we can have an NHS, which is ultimately the country's number one public service priority, that is underfunded and not able to deliver the care that it needs. And that's why I think you can be reassured that the NHS is safe in my hands, because I've taken what was a brave decision to get it the support that it needed, and I hope that that is reassurance to you in the future that we'll continue to support the NHS so it helps people like you and millions of others get the treatment that they need. Liz Truss, John's question essentially was that he struggled to get NHS supports and GP appointments. Well, first of all, can I just say to John, I'm incredibly sorry to hear about his experience in the NHS. And in fact, my mum worked as a nurse at St James's Hospital in Leeds specialising in cancer research. And I know a lot of work goes into that area, but we need to do more. And there has been issues during COVID about people being able to get the support that they need. I think the issue is that too often we are directing and micromanaging people on the front line, the doctors and nurses who do the work. And what I want to see is fewer layers of management in the National Health Service and less central direction because I simply don't think that people can sit there in Whitehall and direct everything that happens in local communities across our country. And I would like to see more support based in GP surgery, so fewer people have to end up in hospital. Also focusing on things like ambulance waiting times, which are a real issue as well, particularly in rural areas. And this is all about giving more power locally and making sure that we trust the professionals who really know what they're doing. You have said that you want to scrap the national insurance increase. So where will extra money come from for the NHS? So I am committed to the extra money that was announced for the NHS. It is needed to deal with the backlog. And I would fund that money out of general taxation. Under my plans, we will still be able to start paying the debt down within three years. So it is affordable. And the fact is, whatever Rishi says now, we did not need to raise national insurance in order to pay. We did have that money available in the budget. It was a choice to break our manifesto commitment and raise national insurance. I think it was the wrong choice to make. I spoke out against it at the time in Cabinet. I still remain opposed to it, and I will reverse that rise. Oh, I used to go to the shopping store and used to get me Monday to Sunday, um, mainly steaks and steaklets. However, now it's twice a week that I mm -hmm. actually attend to the shopping stores when I, when I actually go to okay. the food store. Liz Truss, should Gemma's family go vegetarian? Well, the price of food 
is a huge issue, and this is a global crisis. We know it's being exacerbated by the war in Ukraine. Things like fertilizer is more expensive, grain is more expensive. That is feeding through to the costs our farmers are having to pay. And one thing I would do is reduce the red tape on farmers, focus on food production, because this is an important issue to help families across Britain and help make life more affordable for families across Britain. But it's also important that we are resilient and that we have a good food supply in the face of these global shocks. And we're not solely dependent, particularly not on countries that we can't trust. So that is something that I've been focused on as Foreign Secretary, making sure we have resilient supplies of food and energy. What we need to make sure is that people are keeping more of their own money. And what has happened is that the tax has been raised on families through national insurance, so they're having to pay more money to the Treasury. I do think it is morally wrong at these, this moment when families are struggling to pay for their food that we have put up taxes on ordinary people when we said we wouldn't in our manifesto and when we didn't need to do Richard so. Sinek, is that this morally is a, wrong? This, this inflation is a global problem. You know, it's incredibly important we continue to face down Vladimir Putin to end this appalling war, which is causing yeah, some of this food price inflation. Response on that. Is it morally wrong? I think what's morally wrong is asking our children and grandchildren to pick up the tab for the it's bills that true. we're not prepared to meet. It's and if we're now going to have this conversation, true. that would be great. Because, you know, I think we all knew that we did a lot to support the country through COVID. And I don't think anyone thought that there wouldn't be a bill to pay for that. So the yeah. question is, who's going to pay that bill? And we had a question right at the beginning about corporation tax. And I think it's entirely reasonable to ask the largest companies in this country, just the top 10% of country uh, companies, to pay a bit more because they received a lot of help during the pandemic. And as we think about, well, how do we fix this problem? How do we fund the things, the public services that we rely on? Is it reasonable to ask the biggest companies in the country to pay a bit more tax? They still will pay a very generous rate of tax compared to most other countries, so it's very competitive and fair. But I think it's reasonable to ask them to contribute to helping us fix the okay, problem. Liz and that Liz, Liz, wants, Liz, wants to, Liz wants to cut the taxes for big business. Well, I don't think that's fair. With regard, with with regard to, if I could just finish, finish this, this question about what's morally right and wrong. Right. It, it's important what we leave our kids and our grandkids. And I think it is important to think about that inheritance. Yeah. And I don't want to pass them a bill that we couldn't be okay. bothered to pick up And ourselves. you made that point. You've made that point in previous debates. And we've talked about inflation at some length. Let's trust your policies. Ec economists warn, will rise, inflation will rise under can, your plans. How much will people's mortgages go up? Can, can you level with them? Can I just make the point about corporation tax? I am not talking about cutting corporation tax. I'm talking about not raising corporation tax. Under Rishi's plan, we will end up raising corporation tax to the same level it is in France, more than 10 percentage points higher than it is in Ireland. And companies have a choice about whether they invest in the UK or whether they invest elsewhere. Rishi's policies are making us less competitive. We were in Stoke yesterday. We heard from people working at local ceramics manufacturers. Those people's jobs rely on that investment. The fact is, that if you put up corporation tax too high, you get less money into the exchequer. So all this talk about we're going to be paying these debts off, we're not going to be paying these debts off if we go into recession and the tax take goes down from companies and the tax take goes down from people because they're out of work. So we that is we'll be and, back and in recession. Kate, can I just plan. say, we are, pro we are currently projected to head for a recession We've currently got the lowest projections of growth rates in the G7. The problem we have, the biggest problem we face, is a lack of economic growth. And economic growth is not just a number on a spreadsheet. Well, let's get economic an answer in growth here from Richard, is about because remember jobs our, our and opportunities some readers for want people. to hear these answers. So, recession, Rishi Sunak. Well, let's take all these points. I, I think it, some readers will have to make up their own mind, but I think some readers are sensible enough and have enough common sense to know that you don't get something for nothing and we do need to pay for things. I think everyone accepts that. So the question is, how do we pay for things? 
I think it's reasonable to ask the largest companies, because my plans only apply to the largest companies for to pay a little bit more. I think that's fair. For the smallest companies, nothing's going to change, because I want to support small businesses, like my mum growing up. Uh, small businesses, our pubs, our restaurants, are getting a cut on their business rates this year, something The Sun has campaigned for. Small companies are getting help to employ staff. They're getting a tax cut on that. And of course I care about our international competitiveness. I've spent really? my life in business internationally. And that experience has told me that what we need to do to support growth in this country is to get our companies investing. It's no good them making lots of profits that they just then all dividend out to their shareholders. We want them to invest that money back in the economy. That's how we drive growth and we get better paying jobs. So what I propose to do is to cut taxes for businesses that do the right thing. And that's businesses that are investing in our economy because that's how we'll grow it. That's okay. how we'll create better jobs for Sun Readers. Okay.